The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, Jesus asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying, but they were afraid to ask him. Of course they were. The last time Jesus predicted his death, Peter challenged him on the propriety of a Messiah being killed. They didn't need a reminder of how devastating Jesus' rebuke of Peter was. Now he predicts his death a second time. No one asks anything. Instead, on the road, they argue over which one of them is the greatest. Do you see the irony? Jesus speaks of giving himself up, and they talk about which one of them is the most important. Do they act as if he said nothing about suffering and death, and they distract themselves talking about other things? But here Jesus responds. When Peter criticizes Jesus, Jesus' answer is that anyone who wants to follow him will take up a cross will deny themselves, will lose or be willing to lose everything. Last week we heard Jesus say, if you don't think this is something messiahs should be doing, listen to this. It isn't just for me, it's for all who follow me. Today, Jesus responds to frivolous chatter about who's most important by saying a similar thing with a different image. Jesus says, if you want to be first among my followers, be last, be servant of all. And they don't understand this any better. But do we? Or if we don't or don't want to understand, are we afraid to ask? Afraid because Jesus might become all too clear. We've heard sayings like this from Jesus all our lives. So what are we nattering about as we walk down the road? Like the disciples, we talk about a lot of things. Unlike the disciples, most of the things we talk about are pretty important. Churchwide conversations about scriptural interpretation, church order, and sexuality. Church conversations and meetings in this city about how better to address poverty and homelessness and starvation of far too many of God's children in our midst. Workshops and meetings about the church's problem with racism. Hand-wringing over the decline of membership in mainline denominations and strategies proposed. Many of these things are important to talk about. We want to participate in God's hope for this world and be faithful, so we talk about how to do that about plans and strategies, marketing, and awareness. But when was the last time you ever heard a Christian group, national, local, congregational, have a focused debate, a workshop, a strategy on servanthood? We have committees at Mount Olive that 
help us do our properties and take care of them to care for our worship, our stewardship, our mission, our ministry with youth and families, and many more. They're all important things. But we don't have a committee on cross-bearing, a director of servanthood, people who might help us in our understanding of what Jesus is asking us to do when we're called to follow, people who might help us find an openness to the Spirit, that God might enter into our hearts and change them into servant hearts in every aspect of our lives. They didn't understand and they were afraid to ask, can we learn from this? If we read the New Testament, all of the things that Christians plan and strategize and talk about are important things, or most of them. Most of what we discuss in the church is something that we have found in Scripture. But in the New Testament, they are always secondary to a greater understanding of what Christ came to do and call us to be. In the three times that Jesus predicts his death to his disciples, he always follows it with a call for them to live a servant life. After his resurrection, he continues with that center in his preaching and teaching, and the rest of the New Testament writers echo this core. When Jesus makes these predictions, he does two things. He says, look at the cross and understand what God is doing there, and then live a similar way. But we struggle to understand why the cross and our lives bearing a cross ourselves are always at the heart of everything that Jesus is about. When we think of the cross, we rarely consider it in light of our decisions and actions and activities that we make every day. But Jesus always goes there, always goes to our lives. Thanks be to God, the disciples finally did understand and in the New Testament, we have the record of their understanding. We have them telling us what they have learned so that we might understand, showing us how we might see what it looks like. And today, we hear James. It's a wisdom from above, James says, this servant heart that Jesus calls us to have. It's a gift of the Spirit. It comes from God. And James says it is pure gentle, peaceable, it's willing to yield, it's full of mercy and full of good fruits. There is no trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. In the New Testament, the writers consistently talk about this wisdom and again and again they put it into concrete terms like James just did to help us better see what it would look like for us to help us understand how we would know we were living in this servant life. And what these writers tell us is all of those things that we talk about, those deep concerns of God for this world that we care to be participating in, that we feel called to do, all of them will flow out of this new reality. That if you urge the Spirit to give you this wisdom, you will be changed. And all of these things that you care about and that God cares about that you want to be a part of will just come naturally from you. That you could ask to be made peaceable and gentle. Ask the Spirit to teach you how to be willing to yield, to be full of mercy. Ask God to take away any peace of hypocrisy or partiality. And when we are changed into servant hearts and servants of God, changed into cross bearers, that's how God is going to be the, doing the healing of all things. That's the plan. So, do you understand? And if you don't, are you afraid to ask Jesus? If you are, that's okay. Jesus has a lot of experience with disciples who misunderstand and get distracted. And this life, James describes, of a servant 
and all of the lists of life in Christ that we see in the scriptures, it's a vulnerable place to go. It's a vulnerable place to be. Jesus said it today, be last, not first. Be servant of all. It will require great courage, heart strength to do this. And that comes from God. But that's the center of all of this. God wants to give this to you, James says. The love the triune God shows at the cross, what Jesus keeps telling you to look at, is more than just a model. It is the power of God to enter into your life and help you, change you, so that you can live that model, be that model. And remember, you're not in this alone. We're together, joined together in baptism and in God's love. With the Spirit's help, we can help each other. We can help each other get over our fear of asking. Help each other find the clarity from God we need and the courage to walk the path of Christ ourselves. And that's something worth talking about as we walk this road together. In the name of Jesus, amen.